that was one of the best moments of the film to me. I thought there was a little bit too much contrast in the scenes of Hassan's father. It was kind of like he was either very unpleasant, like the first scene and the scene where he starts out talking about how hard he worked and then slaps the boy for having participated in the faux rape. And then these other two scenes where he's very kind and gentle towards the boy. And I thought the whole thing of, I've worked so hard, I just want you to have it better than I did, would have worked so well in a different context. I thought that would have been perfect if the delivery had been like Hassan sort of blowing off his father, and then his father saying, I know I can be tough on you, I know I work a lot, but I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this for our family. Instead of it kind of being ammo, you know, it's kind of like, I do all this and then you... I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't parents like that, but they did try to make him, at times, a likable character. And I just think that that would have been a really good way to properly bring that aspect of it into it. Because a lot of parents who aren't really their child's favorite people are indeed in that situation. They're working really hard to make sure their children have good lives. You know, I understand the act. I understand the man who portrayed Hassan's father isn't really an actor, but has been very vocal in trying to trying to prevent crime committed by youths. I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea to then portray such an at parts very unlikable character, but hey, that is his business, and I will say he did a fantastic job. At first I didn't really understand why Louise would open the mail with that video playing with her mother right there, but I think it was supposed to be like a cry for help, a cry for attention at least, and the mother completely failed, and that is the tragedy of Louise's character. I'd also say that her father's absence probably leads to... I mean, we only really hear Hassan describe it, and he might be biased, but apparently she's been with a lot of guys, undoubtedly trying to get attention and love for males. I like the use of voiceover, sort of book-ending, one of the first things we hear, one of the last things we hear, and thematically, they work quite well. I'm also perfectly okay with the first one being an essay. I don't think that her reading it aloud in class like that... I mean, yes, she might be asked to do so, but reading such a personal and emotional essay would really get her more negative attention, you know? And like I mentioned in the review, I really thought it was too much to just have everything she said in class be a right answer and be the theme. You know, first the essay about how, oh, we're all alone and we really shouldn't be if we just talk together if we just talked to each other, we wouldn't feel so alone. Then we hear the history teacher talk about, oh, that was back when countries thought they could handle it all on their own, but of course we know today that they can't. And then she raises her hand and says, is that why? And then not only perfect answer, but also the theme once again. I did think that the theme as explored in the very last voiceover in Mikkel's letter to her was pretty good, and it felt like something that he might write. He even went so far as to write with love, which I'm not sure she would really have been receptive to. Maybe I'm gonna catch a lot of heat for saying this, but honestly, I didn't feel like the suicide had as much dramatic impact as it should. I think, again, it's that we really don't know these people. Or at least, what we know isn't consistent. 
if she really is that quiet little introverted girl, then she should have had a stronger reaction to the grab tickle grope. I also just do gotta say, especially because there was so very much of it in this particular movie, Danish filmmakers really badly need to get better at noise. Now what I mean by noise is when people are talking without really saying anything. When they don't have anything specific to say, what they say really isn't very convincing or natural. Examples are the students talking to each other. I think almost every single time the males in the class talked to each other, there was at least one thing said that <clears throat> really didn't sound like something that would be said in that situation. Really sounded like something that you would emote rather than say. A good, or should I say bad, example of bad noise is when the parents are watching television. The reactions that they have to the film, or whatever they're watching, sound relatively natural, but they wouldn't be so tight. There wouldn't be so many in such a short space of time. We hear maybe a minute, and they just constantly talk. Maybe it's also the actors. Maybe it's not so much directors and writers. Actors, trust me. Or ask anyone else. Ask experts. You don't have to constantly be saying something. Try to think of your real life. You're not constantly saying something. There are pauses. There are times where nothing is really said. It's very distracting when you see people talk like that in such an unnatural manner. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Hala Mai, or Hold Me Tight. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time.